So hello, everyone. Thanks for coming to this uh, short session. Uh, today, I want to share with you how to simplify your in indie game development workflow. Uh, most of what I am going to share are lessons learned with my project, which is Suki and the Shadow Cloud. Maybe you have heard of it, maybe you're not, but that's fine. Uh, but before getting into the technical stuff, I want to share some of the story of what led me into this point of using Houdini. So what, I, what you are going to see first is kind of embarrassing because it's very old stuff. But I want you mostly to see the difference before using Houdini and after using Houdini. So yeah, th this, is, this is how the game was looking before actually using Houdini. I mean, I, I was still uh, very happy with the, with the result. But the issue that I was having is that I was doing all of the, all of the process by hand. I mean, like every platform I was like modeling vertice by vertice, like setting up the, the UVs manually. So, I mean, even when I was a bit happy with the result, like this was a very, a very time consuming uh, process. So yeah, so this is like some of, of the many main issues I was having. So I was spending too much time doing variations of the same asset. Maybe you saw some of the trunks. So before then I was like modeling those by hand. So that was very time consuming. The quality was not standardized, which means that maybe the textures will be different uh, size of uh, every time. Maybe sometimes I will have the trunks like of different uh, thickness. So maybe sometimes the, the dragon would not fit in on it. So I, it was like too many human errors. So maybe some colliders were not working, but, uh, the platforms were not flat. So I was having too many, too many issues to, to be making some of the assets manually. And that some, at some point led me to, to find for some kind of premium level editor too. So uh, I didn't knew about Houdini for some time because I come from a 3D background. But like everyone thinks about Houdini that it is a, a very complex tool and most of the people at least at an indie level is kind of afraid of start using it. So now I want to show you how, how how the game looks uh, just using Houdini. So, so now this is some of the new footage and all of it is using Houdini. Uh, I love the quality. Uh, the, also, uh, this, uh, working on this quality is way faster than the previous video. So I am spending less time on this, on this quality than the previous one. So I am very happy with the two. So I want to share some of the experience of, of uh, moving from one point to, to another. So yeah, oh, nice. Now the, the videos work. <laughs> so how is it to use Houdini when you are uh, uh, working on any game? So here, uh, the first thing that I did for this game is to create some camera system that shows me how the, like each area of the level is going to look like on, for the player on every, on every moment. You can see uh, the game view is it's on the right side. Oh, yeah, I did repeat the video. And so instead of just uh, dragging like static assets or maybe assets made by an artist, you can see how I have uh, completely smart objects. So these are uh, Houdini digital assets, HDAs. But like this is not just a, a preset uh, thing that Houdini has. So uh, basically you can have an HDA of, of anything you like. Uh, so you, you can adapt. Uh, every HDA to any till, any till you need. So you can see how every object has different properties and it is adapting directly into Unity. So my workflow so far uh, at the moment is incredibly faster than, than the previous one. So if you have like played with Mario Maker of that kind of games, so the development with, with Houdini is, is now like, like just thinking of, of the level. So you have like your own, very own set of, of any tools you like. So when I was recording this video, like I was just making a demo room for this presentation, but then I actually got very excited and continued to, to work on it. And this is now a, an area I am going to use in the game. So, so yeah, let, let me show you how, how now, now it looks like. Okay. So before that, uh, I, I was uh, like iterating some of the, some of the areas. So you can see maybe this is the starting point. So yeah, I had first uh, a wood uh, platform, but then I 
I think it was not fitting the environment. So I changed it for a metal platform. And if I hit play in the Unity engine, you can see how everything is just working. So the colliders are there, the textures are there, uh, the light mapping information is there. So since this is the first time I did play with the, with the scene, you can see how maybe that platform uh, was, not set, was not leveled properly. So the only thing I have to go back is to stop the game, modify the platform just a little bit, and you can see how everything is updated at the same time. So this is a very powerful tool as an indie. So I can just, after modifying the, the platform, I can just hit play immediately. And yeah, I mean, and just like that, the, the player can walk towards this and, and it is fixed. So if you have a, a team of artists or a, or a team in your, in, your, in your indie game, this means that you don't have to send the asset back to the pipeline there. So the person uh, integrated the game can just like modify what they need and start uh, and continue right away. So, so this is how the how this area is looking. As I said, uh, it was just going to, meant to be a, a demo room, but I got I got inspired, so I I am going to use this in in the game. And after less than three hours maybe two, because I was working on the video. This is running on a PS4. And yeah, that complete sound took me about three hours. So you can see it, it has a, the, like a very darkish mood. So this is actually like an area before entering, entering to a boss fight. So uh, yeah, that was made in less than three hours. So I am very happy with the result. So now uh, this is like some of the frequent Houdini questions that people has. So Houdini has a set of, of customable pre-made assets. The answer is no. So procedural, you mean like Minecraft? Uh, no, so well, in Minecraft, like everything is random. So in here you have full process of the input and of the output. So it's, it's, not, it's not similar. So can Houdini make my insert your custom asset in here? Like I have, it can be like, uh, like, uh, how do you say it? like like high tech? It can be like something like it's the light like this, something more simple, something minimal. So yes, Houdini can pretty much do any any asset you need. So this this is like basically how how it works. So we have Unity, we have Houdini Engine, which is the the plugin, and then we have a, a background Houdini session. So in, what is happening in the big picture is that. We see the HDA parameters on Unity. So it sends by, via, by, via Houdini engine all the data to Houdini. It cooks all the information in the background. So Houdini sends the, the mess information. And Houdini en uh, engine sends the information to Unity. So it is built directly into the game for anything you need. So, so I am going to show a simple HDA. Then I am going to show a, a very complex one just to see just so you can see like, like the basics and then how far can you get with that. So, so I, we are going to get a bit fast in here. So the, the, my basic workflow is this. So I, have, I work on Unity the, and Zebrush Substance and then Houdini. So, so I start with a, with a low polygon mesh and I start like sculpting in Zebrush. Uh, I am doing this because I, I need like the normal map information. So I also want the asset to be stylized and I have a, a very uh, the art direction is already rigid. So, so after I, ha I have the high polygon model, then I, I send that to, to Substance. I, I also have my, my own set of smart materials, so it gives the asset the exact look I am looking for. So this takes me just a, f a few minutes to do. Of course, like there is some, some manual tweaking after, after that, so it does not look like completely automatic. And the last thing I want to check before sending this to, to Houdini is that, that this asset by itself uh, looks fine and that it has the style I am looking for. So I just send like all the textures from, from Substance and everything to, to, to Unity. And I am going, going to configure the, the material just to make sure that it, it is looking fine. And after tweaking the, the material a bit, I think I am satisfied with the result. So. I can be 100% sure that this is going to, this is the final look that the, my Houdini asset is going to, to have. So, okay. 
So now that I have like uh, the different pieces for, for the asset, I am going to assemble that into, into Houdini. So I am going to create the HDA. So how is it to work with Houdini? So for this asset in particular, I start with an input line. That line is going to define the overall shape of the, of the asset. So the first thing I, I, am, I, I have to do is to divide this, this input line. Uh, where on, on every point in here, I am going to place the, the what trunk. The, so then here I have the, the FBX, uh, I, the asset I did work with. Uh, I am going to place it near the origin just to make sure that, that the, the copies are going to be set properly because the origin is the base point for the base position for the, for the final asset. So now that we have everything ready, you can see how I am copying uh, a wood plank on every point. So that's the step one of them of the of this. And taking the same input curve, now I am going to, to use it for making the chains. So in every point, I am going to duplicate a, a chain link, just like that. And you can see how with only one simple asset, I have the, the, full, ch the, the full chain uh, completed. So, so the only thing I have to need is to merge the, the two objects together. And you like that, here we have this, this what, wood asset. So this is still a half of the, of the process. But the awesome thing about this is that if I go back and modify the input curve, like the asset is going to be rebuilt, uh, uh, generating a new variation of it. So this is a very powerful tool for for level development. Uh, and you, just to make sure that everything is, is working fine, so I am sending this HDA into Unity. So here we have our the mesh from our, our asset, but this is this is still not yet fully customiz customizable. So so we are going to that's that's the next step. So the next thing that we have to do is to expose some of the parameters so we can edit them on the Unity side. So what do we need to expose is the, the curve, the input curve and the and some of the what parameters. So okay. So here I am looking for the for the input curve. So this is it, it is this node. This is the node that is controlling the overall shape of the asset. And the only thing I have to do is that in the in the type properties window, I just need to to point over the editable nodes, I need to point to, to this specific curve. So once this curve is set as editable in the, in the HDA that we have in Unity, the only thing that need, we need to do is to rebuild it. And you can see how we immediately have this same curve exposed into Unity. And since it is using the Houdini engine uh, plugin, if we modify this curve in Unity, it is going to, to have the same behavior in that, that in Houdini. So, so that's, that's one of the first steps. The next step will be to, to expose like the distance between every, every wood plank. So the only thing I have to do is to, to find the node that is controlling this particular uh, property, drag, this, drag the values that I want to expose into Unity, save the HDA, go back into Unity, and you can see how everything is going to be updated. So like the, the previous information that we had is still preserved in, into Unity, but now we also have the, the parameters that we need exposed, and so we can replicate any behavior that we need from Houdini directly into Unity. So this is a huge time saver, especially if you have a very small team. We have exactly the same behavior. So now, if, if we want to control like some Unity specific properties, we can do that directly into, into Houdini. So the way to do that is to is by uh, attribute, attributes. So attributes are, is information that we can save into the model. So Houdini engine is going to read that before sending it to, to, to Unity, and it is going to apply certain properties that we need. So this is like some of the things that we are going to do. So we are if we use uh, group some geometry using the collision geo name. We are going to create a collision mesh. We have the Unity material attribute to assign uh, any material that we need. We have the UVs uh, 
also to, to send to Unity. And we, are, we can also modify static flags and pretty much uh, more things. So this, this is the only ones that I want to show for now. Like you can see most of them at the documentation. But let's work with the collision first. So I am going to grab the, like, the same input curve that I have. And I am going to give it like some, some volume. And you can see uh, this, I am putting like this low poly mesh into a group called Collision Geo, as it, as it said in the, in the previous slide. Sorry. And as soon as I rebuild it, so Houdini Engine is going to take that, that mesh and send it to Unity, but it is going to send it like as a collision mesh. So you can see like it works uh, right away. So this is like just a sphere with the rigid body just to show it. But like we, we have like full control of the information. So something else that I want to do is to prepare this mesh for like for light maps. So this object already has uh, one single UV channel, so that's great. But if we want to, to make some light maps, we are going to have an issue because we have overlapping UVs. So if I, if I check the UVs of the, of the final asset, you can see how like most of the UVs like were overlapping like that. So we Houdini has like a very good uh, like these some some awesome tools which is uh, the the copy attribute. So what I am going to do here is that I duplicate the first UV channel, I rename it to UV two as you can see right there, and then using a UV layout layout node, uh, it is what it, this is going to do is that it is going to to put like every uh, every uh, UV island on a different on a different part, and and I also like set the the unit static attributes. So so when I go back to my asset, you can see how the the light map UVs are are there. So we can like pretty much uh, use them to with, without having to worry about overlapping UVs. So we have like once again we have like full control of the asset. So here we go. We we are going to do a, like a very quick uh, light map. So you like you like that. And if we check like how the how Unity is handling handling the UVs, you can see that it is getting the the channel that we got from from Houdini. And the last thing that we need to do is just to assign or custom material. So so the only thing we have to do is tell uh, Houdini Engine where to find the material, and you can see there we have like the full asset with our own material with the full, with the collision with the UV maps. So pretty much anything we need. So this was the, the simple asset. So however, Houdini and Houdini engine is not limited to that. You can like start like doing more, more stuff. So in here, I am going to talk uh, about instance, which is something else that I use a lot. So instance work better for big assets. So because, well, you we are going to see this. Uh, using, using instance is also occlusion calling friendly. And also like memory friendly because we are like recycling the same the same model. So maybe you saw this asset on the on the first video, and this is this is a, a big wall. So the issue I, ha I had with this before working with instances is that as soon as maybe one a, a few pixels are visible, like Unity is going to render the, the whole geometry. So so that's not like very optimal. So by using instances, like I only have one one single model of each object. So you can see like this is like one single, yeah, one single object of the of the word column. Just one. And then I I I, I only have another of the wall. So what I need to do with the Houdini instance is using points, I only need to, to give the position of where those copies are going to be. You like that. So that's the positions for the columns. So this is like the, the other wall asset. It's just only one object. And this are the and this is the, the positions for, for every copy of the of the wall. So when I send this to Unity, you can see how we can still maintain the procedural behavior with a very big difference that this is this these are instances. So what does this mean? So on the Unity side, each one is, is a different game object. So you can see I each one of these is a different game object. So this is better for optimization. This is better for, for big assets. 
And the most important of this is that this is occlusion calling friendly, which means that if, if it is not going to be visible on the camera, Unity can just hide that object and it is not consuming any of our resources. Pretty awesome. <laughs> okay. So one last asset that I want to show, and it is one of the ones I am the most happy about, is the final version of the of the trunks. So this asset use, uses custom vertex color information. Uh, this asset uh, this asset also spawns different instances to make it work immediately. And this asset also spawns scripts and attach them directly into into game objects, and all of that is controlled on the Houdini side. I am very happy about this asset, and of course, it works right away. So, so I think I, uh, I needed to do this uh, be this specific video the other way, but here we have these the same the same curve. Uh, most of my assets use an input curve because I want to have full control of the shape while keeping it procedural. So this is like some of the game mechanics. So at some point, I wanted the player to jump from one trunk to another. So it was hard for me to, to align them perfectly. So I decided to, to work this on the HDA. And you can see how it is all coming from the same curve. So this is the collision mesh I am, mesh I am using. It was so very, very simple. And I also am using like multiple materials on, on one single object. So this is the inside mesh. It has a, a different material. So this is also the outside mesh. This is also using vertex color. Now I am mixing like this. This uh, was made on ZBrush. So I am also like mixing handmade assets. So, so yeah, this asset is like mixing most of the stuff I am using for the game merging them all together. And, and on this note, I am just like telling which script I want to spawn. So I, I, these are, are also like instance points for the prefabs that I am going to instantiate. Uh, this is just a, a quick representation. But the, the cubes are going to are uh, helper prefabs for the player. So it helps the dragon to get inside. The other uh, smaller spheres are other pre uh, camera triggers to, to make the, the game camera to get closer. So this is how it looks in game. So I realized that maybe it will be more exciting to show first the game running and then the, but uh, it's fine. So this is the, the same asset running directly into the game. And yeah, the only thing I am doing is modifying the, the input curve. So everything is spawned on one. And it's just working right away. You can see like the, the entrance helper triggers, the camera triggers inside, like everything is just working. So I just hit play directly. And yeah, this asset is working right away. It has like this uh, transparent effect. And so as soon as I, I work on one single asset, I can re reuse it as many times as I want. So, so this is one of the assets I am most happy about when it comes to Houdini engine. So Houdini is a really awesome tool for indies. It is not only uh, like for AAA, so it is an indie can have a full advantage of these kind of tools. So you are not only creating uh, art assets, but you are creating fully functional assets for your game. So it is going to speed up your workflow. And you are also going to have a standardized asset. So you can make sure that any asset that you are going to spawn it is always going to have like the same kind of collision, the same texture size. So pretty much it's a very standardized asset. So you can just focus on the content. So, so yeah. Uh, this is like some of the awesome learning resources that I have been using to on this process. So I don't know how are we doing on time. Uh, uh, okay. So I want to close this uh, presentation with the, la with the latest state of the game. Oh, so this is not yet published, so I hope you, you enjoy it. But this was possible thanks to, to Houdini Engine. So hope you like it.
So yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> so yeah, every indie should be using Houdini. I, I don't know why they are not using Houdini, so. <laughs> so thank you. I don't know if like, there's like room for questions or anything, uh, okay. Yeah, sure, uh, any questions? We have room for one. Uh, Pack Geo, I think it, it is calculated uh, on the GPU. So I don't know. That that is good, like for pickups and for uh, like dynamic images. But like if you are if you want like the light maps to be baked, and so that does not like, exist on the CPU side. So so yeah. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, sure. So thank you. I am going to be here. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>